Hello friends, welcome back to She's in Her Apron. Okay, are you ready to stock up for this month of August? We are gonna stock up on fruits and vegetables. We're gonna talk about canned, dehydrated, and freeze dried. So down below I have a playlist. I've been putting out a video every month this year on what to buy. So if you'd like to see what to stock up on the past months, I encourage you to go click that playlist. Last month, just as a review, we went over some summer foods and canning. If you would like all the details on that, the link is below. So I'm gonna be sharing quite a bit of what I have in my storage for you for vegetables. So if there's a situation that has started in your area, one of the first things to go is the frozen food. People like to stock up their freezer. So your frozen section for fruits, vegetables is going to be very, very picked over. So we want to go for the long lasting. So that way, if the power goes out, you are good to go. So I want you to stock the sales, literally stock them. I want you to get online, look through your flyers, call your stores, see if there's an upcoming sale that they know about and want to share about. Here in Utah, in August and September, a lot of stores start having sales on their canned items, basically their fruits and vegetables. Right now, Utah is gearing up for a case lot sale starting in September, and I have my eye on a few items. Just because a store has decided we're gonna have a case lot sale, which is selling canned items in bulk, doesn't always mean it's a good deal. Sometimes they'll have like chicken broths and chicken stock on sale, and it's actually better if I wait till November during Thanksgiving when that is on sale. So I do have price points, but if I'm really running low on something, I'll pick it up. So I am gonna be very, very strategic this case lot sale. I'm gonna be looking very close at prices, and I know prices could be different this time around because of inflation, but I'm gonna see if it's still in the price range that I'm willing to pay for. Let's talk about freeze dried food for just a minute. So in my food storage, I do have a lot of dehydrated and freeze dried vegetables. You can use freeze dried vegetables in soups, stews, casseroles. So to use them, all you have to do is let them sit in water and they will reconstitute. So you can use them in any recipe that you may have. They actually cook faster than dehydrated vegetables. You can actually put them in your blender, ground them down, and use that powder in your soups and stews. If you're a mama, have you stocked up on baby food? Well, if you're worried that you haven't, but you're stocking up on vegetables along with everybody else in the family to use, you can grind that up, and that is a great way for you to make baby food. There's freeze-dried fruit, meats, even yogurt. If you want to reconstitute it, a tip that I have found on the internet is um, to add about two to three tablespoons of extra water for every cup of vegetables that you're going to cook into a meal. Freeze dried vegetables can be added to any snacks that you have, like a trail mix. You could use corn, beans, cauliflower, broccoli, celery, and peppers. Actually, freeze dried peppers are really yummy. Let's talk about short-term and long-term and I'll share with you what I have. So what is considered short-term is your canned vegetables. For canned vegetables for your short-term, they do have a longer shelf life than what is saying on the can. They could go actually three to five years. I even read articles where they could go to eight at the most if they're stored good. There's no bulging, there's nothing disturbing that seal around the top of the can and the bottom of the can. So you just wanna keep an eye on that. But they can go further than what the date on the can says. Canned tomatoes, on the other hand, have a shorter shelf life. I read they have 18 to 24 months, but our tomatoes don't last long on our shelf. Those are like the first things that we're always cycling through. So maybe try to think, okay, whatever it says on the can, let's not go over two years. Think of a variety of vegetables that you can have on hand to make a, a yummy meal for your family. So I like to look for green beans, celery, onions, chilies, so I can add them and, and spice up a dish. I just found squash in our area, I, or at least I have never noticed it before. So I've been trying to stock up on squash. So if the squash in the can is going on sale at all during the case lot sales in a few weeks here, I'm definitely gonna be stocking up on that. Mushrooms, I used to buy the mushrooms years ago, and I'd rather get my mushrooms in the freeze-dried or dehydrated cans than in a can. I think the texture, um, I don't know, it's just better in the freeze-dried. I don't know why, but it just is 
for us, that's our opinion. We just started buying potatoes and carrots and throwing them into the stews. I'm really glad I decided to do the potatoes. That was a great investment. Um, I picked them up on a case, the last case lot sale that Utah had. If you'd like to see that video, I'll link it below. That haul was pretty big, so if you're interested in seeing what we stocked up, go take a look at that. Okay, long term is your dehydrated vegetables and your freeze dried vegetables. So the shelf life on these items are 20 to 30 years and that is amazing. And that way you can cycle them into your short term and use them as time goes. But it's great to have um, to go longer. Now I've done some research because we have cans from when we were first married and I've done some research and they can actually go a little longer if they have been stored correctly. Buying dehydrated and freeze dried can be expensive but just watch for sales. Find out in your area where you can find some of these things. Um, our church, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, sells these items, so go look and see if there's a storehouse near you. There's lots of companies online that sell freeze-dried and dehydrated foods. We've been getting some of our food right now from Thrive Life. I do have an affiliate link down below. I loved them so much that I decided to become an affiliate. My mother-in-law signed up. She would build up her food storage with them, and then she would send us some cans so some of the labels look different though some of the older cans but I have a ton of the new cans again all the information is down below just go check it out see if it fits you and your budget okay so here is some of my long-term food storage it's from morning moose we've already got 10 years on the cans and they have a 25 year shelf life so we'll rotate these in into our long-term food storage going into our short-term food storage so we have potato shreds. I have three, no, four of that. Uh, potato pearls, and there is two, four, six, seven of those. Some honey powder, two, three, five honey powders, four uh, cross-cut celery, red and green bell pepper mix. We have four of those. Two buttered powders, uh, let's see, two beef bouillon and three chicken bouillon, two cheese blends, one dried egg product, whole eggs, and three chopped onions. So I'm, I'm going to start using these, um, like the cheese blend, you can make macaroni and cheese with that. Um, your celeries and um, vegetables, you rehydrate them basically, and then you can throw them into your dishes and things. So. I'm gonna be starting a series on this. It is coming, I just gotta get organized, and that is what I'm doing. If you're thinking of building up a food storage, it's good to have some of the fun foods in there as well. What if you were in a situation and you, you've got all this food, but you just want something for your sweet tooth? Well, I'm so excited to share this with you. I have a ton of freeze-dried candy here to share with you. It is so, so, so good. Okay, so this is from my friend's company. My friend Heather, she's a doll. So this is Anderson's Crazy Freeze-Dried Candy, and it is so, so good. They come in a tight pouch, but they can last up to 20 years, she said. Just keep them in a dry, dry place. So let me share with you some of the um, candy she sent out to me. So first up, we have the freeze-dried watermelon rings. They smell and taste just like them because they are them and they just put them in their freeze-drying machine and bam, you have this crunchy, yummy watermelon ring. It's so good, you guys. The texture is so cool. So, and this one is freeze-dried taffy. So this is the peppermint one. I can't remember what that one was, but that was the Neapolitan. So when you bite into it, it like disperses into your mouth and then it gets soft and chewy. Oh, it's so good. I can't tell you which one's my favorite because they're seriously all so good. The Skittles are amazing. They're called freeze-dried rainbow bites and look how they look when they're freeze-dried. Look at that shape. They pop right out of the shell. And then there's just dried fluff. I think it's like the crumbs of some of the candy and they added a pixie stick to it so the kids can use it for dipping. Oh my gosh, how fun is that? These are like a multi yummy honey bite. Oh. So good, you guys, the honey crunchers. And then peach rings, who doesn't love peach rings? My kids love peach rings. So this is a hit right now. And then Jolly Ranchers. So this is a Jolly Puffer, and they are Jolly Ranchers. And 
the explosion in your mouth of the flavor is amazing. <laughs> so this is so fun to have on hand in your long-term food storage because you're gonna want those sweet things. And I think it's definitely a cool thing to put in your 72 hour kits, your bug out bags, especially if your sugars are running low and you need a sugar boost. Oh, these will definitely do it. Check out down below, I have the link for you, Anderson's Crazy Candy. It's so, so good. Some other things you can focus on this month is rice, sugar, potatoes, and also, you know, if you are gonna be looking at the sales and notice that your stores are having really good sales on canned items in the next month, this month or the next month, look at canned meat, canned tuna. I just grabbed some canned pulled pork from Costco just a few weeks ago and added that to our food storage room. And also focus on dry milk. I know I have mentioned dry milk a few times in the series, but it is so important for nutrition, especially if you have kids and if you wanna make any baked goods, you'll definitely want that. Thrive Life also has dried milk and I have some other options in my food storage room. Last month when I was preparing for food storage, I bought some really good food grade buckets from a local grocery store and I got the, the lids that turn there's a word for it and I'm drawing a blank. That way we can get in and out of our short-term storage, but everything is in there um, tight and nothing can get in. So I ended up grabbing some of those because I am gonna be grabbing more flour and more sugar this season. So when the case lot sale happens, there's always flour, there's always sugar, there's always rice. So I'm gonna be keeping an eye out on the price, grabbing more. Um, I can just dump it in the bucket or I can put it in some food saver bags. And of course, when I do that, I'll take you along. Um, we're working really hard on our long-term food storage right now. And I grabbed a five gallon water cube. This was also at Macy's grocery store as well, and I thought, oh, why not? Let's grab it. Always good to be able to store water. You can store water in two liter soda pop bottles if you want, but every time I go to the grocery store, especially Walmart, I'm always grabbing at least four gallons of spring water and we store it in the closet. But we also have two big round barrels um, for storing water. So I ended up grabbing this cube. It was at a great price and it's actually hysterical what it says on there. It shows what you could use it for, for going camping, travel, emergency preparedness, weekend sporting, ATVing. The best one on here is for the zombie apocalypse. I've cracked up at that. I thought that was so funny. Let me know in the comments below what you were working on last month. How did it go? What did you get? And let me know what you're gonna be working on this month. I am definitely gonna be going through my food storage room and really detailing and seeing what we need. Um, we're doing pretty good. There's, there is some vegetables that we're going through more, but uh, I'm just gonna go through it. And hopefully for the case hot sales, I won't have to buy too much, um, but I do wanna buy more flour and rice. So. Oh, and definitely sugar, so I'm gonna be keeping an eye on that. If you have any tips for us, again, please leave them down below. I love learning. I'm not an expert at this, my husband's not, but we're just finding information and taking it in and doing what our budget says we can do. It has helped our family through some tough times. It has helped us to give to our community and, um, and it's great to have some food insurance on hand. I think the state of how things are going um, in our world, I think it's smart to prepare. And so as long as we are cycling through and menu planning with it, I do have a three month food storage video for you down below if you haven't seen it. Um, it goes into depth about having um, a food, like a three to six month food storage and how you could shop your shelves. So I encourage you, if you haven't started this process, go check out that video. I have a ton of tips for you to help you on your journey. And down below, I'll have some areas that you can go to to research, um, some of my favorite websites that you can go and learn a little more about storing long-term vegetables and fruits. So I'll have all that for you down below as well. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining me and we will see you soon, bye.